Hello, and welcome to this webinar on the catastrophe risk credentials being offered by the International Society of Catastrophe Managers and the CAS Institute. I am Amy Brenner, Director of the CAS Institute. With me today are David Keaton, Executive Vice President of Avoca Risk Underwriting Solutions and President of ISCM, Joanne Spala, President of the CAS Institute, Amy Wixon, Director of Exposure Management at Liberty Mutual Insurance, and Elizabeth Cleary, Managing Director of Guy Carpenter Analytics. A big thank you to Liz, who stepped in for Mark Christensen, Head of Catastrophe Risk Management at Chubb Overseas General, who was originally scheduled to participate, but ended up with a work conflict. Before we begin, I'd like to invite you to use the chat box to write down your questions as they come up. If you don't see the chat option, make sure you maximize your GoToWebinar screen. At the end of the webinar, we will have time to address your questions. I would now like to introduce ISCM President David Keaton. David is among our inaugural class of 15 certified catastrophe risk management professionals. David. Thank you, Amy. Good morning or afternoon, depending on your location, and welcome to our webinar about catastrophe risk management credentialization. We hope that by the end of this webinar, you'll have a better understanding of how this credential came about, why it is important, what obtaining the credential entails, and how your company can add this credential to your education policies. The agenda for today's presentation will touch upon the background and genesis of this joint credentialization effort between the ISCM and the CAS Institute. We'll also highlight some of the benefits to both companies who hire cat risk professionals and to the cat risk analysts and managers working within this profession. The process of creating this credentialization involves wide industry support from many companies that encourage cat risk professionals to volunteer and those volunteers who have contributed substantial hours developing the exams. We'll share some testimonials with you from a few companies representing different segments within the insurance and reinsurance industry. Our presentation will then turn towards implementation by providing you with an overview of the credential structure and exam requirements, as well as outline a process for long-term cat risk practitioners to obtain their credentials through proof of excellence, which is in place until all the exams are released. To wrap things up, we'll touch upon some key considerations when rolling this credential into your company's education policies. This should leave plenty of time at the end to take some of your questions. Let's get this kicked off with a little background on how this all got started. As you may know, the Reinsurance Association of America is a lobbying organization consisting of reinsurers with operations in the US. As catastrophes or extreme events became increasingly important for companies to address, the RAA formed a committee to handle and talk about extreme events. However, it became quickly apparent that as an emerging profession, there was no common industry standards or professional organization yet established. So the RAA and key members of the Extreme Events Committee sponsored the first Cat Risk Education Day, titled at the time as a cat school, the idea was simple, to promote education, bring professionals together to network, and facilitate the discussion of common and or pressing issues. Fast forward to today, and this initial one-day event has become a premier multi-day conference and a must-attend for many within our profession. Shortly after that first CAT school, and in collaboration with the RAA, the ISCM was created to meet the needs of a fledgling but growing community of cat risk professionals. ISCM board and longtime members contribute through participation on the conference steering committee. From the very beginning, the ISCM had as its mission professional education and the eventual creation of a pro professional credential. 
Today, the ISCM has grown to over 500 members reciting and practicing cat risk management throughout the world. Our board includes directors from a wide cross-section within the insurance and reinsurance industry, including brokers as well as model vendors. And I should add that the main model vendors have been active supporters and have been participating on the ISCM board since our inception. Given our mission, the ISCM is focused on promoting excellence through education and professional development. In addition to our continued participation in the annual Cat Risk Management Conference, the ISCM is also sponsoring shorter, one-day focused events to complement the annual conference and provide members more locally convenient and cost-effective opportunities to learn, dis discuss current issues, and develop local networks. Because of the geographic spread of our members, we've also begun providing webinars, similar to this one, in an effort to make education more accessible to our membership. And now, most importantly of all, we, the ISCM and the CIS Institute together, are able to realize one of the primary goals from the inception of the ISCM by jointly offering the CAT risk management credentials. Now, Joanne will tell you about the CIS Institute and how our alliance was formed. Thanks, Dave, and hi, everyone. In 2015, the Casualty Actuarial Society was recognizing that there were a growing number of specialists performing analytical work beyond the traditional scope of work that actuaries performed. Yet there was no common education requirements or means for employers to vet the qualifications of this in, these individuals. In response, the CAS decided in 2015 to launch a subsidiary the CAS Institute, or ICAS for short, to provide specialty credentials and educational and other resources for these professionals. Since its founding, ICAS has grown to over 400 members in 10 countries around the world. Our members work for 200 different companies. The first credential we offered was in data science and predictive analytics. The five requirements for this credential, which include an ethics course, three exams, and a case study project, are all currently available, and 260 professionals have been awarded the Certified Specialist in Predictive Analytics credential so far. The CAT Risk Management credentials that we are discussing today is our second set of credentials. At the same time, um, next slide that ISCM was considering catastrophe risk management as one of the top choices for our second credential offering. ISCM was also exploring a credential. ISCM's education committee drafted a syllabus that was the basis for ISCM's first New York City Education Day. And this would become the subject matter that the credentials would be based on. ISCM and ICAS leaders got together in New York City and began to discuss collaborating. Our alliance was formally announced the next year at the 2017 RAA CAT Risk Management Conference. The alliance leverages the CIS's strengths in administering credentialing exams and continuing education with the ISCM subject matter expertise. We all agreed that our mandate would be to develop a new credentialization program in cat risk management and then maintain and manage the program on an ongoing basis. We agreed to develop continuing professional education requirements as well as educational events to help satisfy these requirements. We also agreed to establish criteria for granting credentials to experienced practitioners while we got the exam program up and running. And finally, we agreed to jointly promote the credentialization program. Next. Under our alliance to jointly manage the program, all approval and authority of aspects of the program rests with both ISCM and ICAS, with each organization having an equal vote. David, Amy, and I sit on the joint advisory committee along with 14 other ISCM and ICAS members. This committee provides advice and recommendations for the program. 
I'll now turn it over to Liz, who will talk about the need for the credential. Thanks, Joanne. So why is it that we need this credential? Catastrophe management has evolved from a rapidly, rapidly growing industry to a crucial element in our measure of risk tolerance. Its relevance to both insurance and reinsurance markets will continue to grow, particularly if forecasts on future weather and losses from emerging risks like cyber come to fruition. North American insurance and reinsurance segments were early adopters of cap management tools and techniques. The London insurance market has the largest concentration of catastrophe management professionals anywhere in the world, currently over 800 people. Other regions around the globe have had exponent, exponential demand for CAT analysts. The worldwide potential to benefit from this credential is compelling. In addition to the significant growth in the catastrophe management industry, it's also becoming more multidisciplinary, with practitioners increasingly focused on specialized areas within the industry. While these more nuanced skills bring much needed expertise to the industry, it also means that we are potentially moving away from a place where all analysts have a common set, set of core competencies. Fifteen years ago, you could be sure that any seasoned catastrophe analyst could explain what OEP, AEP, VAR, and TVAR meant and under what circumstances each should be used. Nowadays, with more specialized roles filling the catastrophe management space, we can't assume that these concepts are as widely understood as in the past. These more varied skills impact the recruitment process and make it more challenging to identify and recruit appropriately skilled colleagues. The actuarial, finance, and risk management departments of insurance companies do not have the same challenge for many years they have had industry-wide international forms of accreditation. When seen on a CV, this points to a standard of technical and theoretical competency. When it comes to catastrophe management in industry at least 20 years old, there are generally only two accreditations, both of which are vendor-driven. The catastrophe industry needs and deserves an internationally accredited vendor agnostic qualification which will stand side by side with other existing qualifications. This accreditation will act as a barometer to gauge the level of expertise within our industry and act as a yardstick against which the industry's future can be measured. Another important consideration is the workplace of today. It is a significantly different place from when the discipline of catastrophe management was development, developing. Employees are looking to join companies which provide a structured career development plan, and the ISCM credentials would be a key element for this. When it comes to assessing the benefits of the ISCM ICAS credential, they're numerous and self-evident. This credential fills a need that the global risk market has had for a number of years, and that's the establishment of a credential which is similar to the fields of actuarial, finance, and risk management. This will elevate the profile and credibility of catastrophe analysts and fuel the supply of analysts in a market driven by increasing demand. Another plus is that it will likely improve the quality of the skills in the field. From a recruitment perspective, employees will be more differentiated, which will allow recruiters to better screen and target potential candidates. This will ensure that candidates apply for jobs better aligned to their skill sets and employees onboard more appropriate candidates. Once a candidate is onboarded, the existence of the qualification will better highlight areas of development and the, enrol and the enrollment will support that development. All these positive factors contribute towards increased employee retention in a time where average job tenures are decreasing. So why should your company support the ISBM accreditation? First, it's a great opportunity to differentiate your organization from your competitors, but in a manner that ultimately benefits employee and employer. It fills any core development needs that your employees may have, but you're not yet aware of. 
It also provides an additional medium by which higher performing employees can be both rewarded and retained, and it can, can provide an employer with the opportunity to set a minimum standard within the team. If we all agree that there is a wide-ranging benefit of an internationally accredited program for the catastrophe industry, why should it be this ISCM ICAV credential? First, the credential is vendor agnostic and therefore the most transferable. Second, the credential requires hundreds of hours of study and is therefore more aligned in depth and complexity to the actuarial qualification, qualifications offered by CAS. Furthermore, the syllabus has been developed by leading industry experts covering insurance, reinsurance, broking, and vendor model markets. And this coverage across a wide portion of the market is both theoretical and practical. Finally, this qualification is and will stay relevant. The plan is for the syllabus to evolve and remain relevant as it's being driven by an ISCM dedicated educational committee. As news of the accreditation has been filtering through the industry, many companies have expressed support and begun building their company policy for adoption. A few company testimonials are referenced here and illustrate the interest spanning across all segments of the industry. We won't read through them, but they can be found at the catriskcredentials.org website. I'd now like to turn the presentation over to Amy Wixon, who will review the credential details as well as some considerations for implementing your company's exam policy for this designation. Thanks, Liz, and hello. As mentioned, I'm Amy Wixon, and I'm a Director of Exposure Management at Liberty Mutual. As shown among the testimonials, Liberty is pleased that this credential program has been developed and we are encouraging and supporting our catastrophe analysts in their pursuit of the designation. So how does the program actually work? I'd like to now share with you some more specific detail of the credential program. The program is designed with two designation levels. Tier one, the certified specialist in catastrophe risk, also known as CSCR, is the base level designation and will ensure that an analyst has a working knowledge of catastrophe analytics along with certain core competencies. And Tier 2, the Certified Catastrophe Risk Management Professional, or CCRMP, offers an advanced certification for those that have moved or desire to move into more senior catastrophe management roles. Similar to other industry credentials, those awarded either of the designations need to be members of both the ISCM and the ICAS. Membership in these organizations provides an opportunity, opportunity to be part of a professional community with access to continuing education activities, forums, and industry events that help foster continued advancement of the catastrophe management community. As mentioned, the first tier designation, the Certified Specialist in Catastrophe Risk, is really about ensuring that an analyst has mastered a set of core competencies. Specifically, the credential will require passage of four exams and the completion of an ethics course. The first exam, Property Insurance Fundamentals, looks to lay the foundation by building an understanding of key aspects of insurance operations, such as underwriting and claims, the basics of rate making, and an introduction to risk management and reinsurance. The second exam will then get into more detail specific to catastrophe risk in the insurance industry. Passage of the exam will demonstrate an understanding of the history and impact of catastrophes on the industry, as well as the evolution and use of catastrophe models within the industry. This exam will also cover regulatory reporting requirements and the relevant actuarial standards of practice. Exam three will cover an introduction to catastrophe modeling methodology. 
This exam will look to ensure an understanding of how catastrophe models are constructed and a basic knowledge of the hazard and vulnerability for the key perils of hurricane or tropical cyclone and earthquake. And finally, the fourth exam will prove an introductory knowledge of the catastrophe modeling process. This will include familiarity with the data used for catastrophe modeling along with its associated challenges. It will also require an intermediate understanding of model results, key statistics, and their application to business needs. Currently, for this designation, the ethics course and the first two exams are available. The third exam will be available starting next month, and the fourth exam is expected to be available sometime in the second quarter of 2020. Exams are administered through the institutes at Prometric testing centers, similar to CPCU exams, and the exams will be available during four two-month windows over the course of each year. So the next, two ex the next two exam windows are October 15th to December 15th, and then January 15th to March 15th. Exams are two to three hours in length, and it is expected that about 100 to 250 hours of study time will be required per exam. This means about a 700-hour commitment for the full Tier 1 program, but clearly, this will vary depending on the familiarity and experience of the individual candidate. The expected time to complete the Tier 1 credential is two years, a pace of two exams a year. Study material packages, including guides and practice exams, are available when registering for the exam. For exam one, other specific industry exams can be used as a substitute. For example, the CPCU, ACAS, FCAS, or CSPA credential, along with the ARE designation, will qualify as a substitute. Other substitutes are also available, and international equivalents are under development. Ultimately, it is expected that regionalized versions of exams one and two will be offered in order to accommodate specific country and region criteria, but this will not be necessary for exams three and four. For the advanced credential, the Certified Catastrophe Risk Management Professional, exams are currently under development and not yet available. The syllabus for this credential will delve into the advanced use of catastrophe models and their application, including risk management and capital allocation, and also covering the building, validation, and modification of catastrophe models. It is expected that this second tier will consist of two additional exams. Finally, for those like myself that have been at this for a while, there is the Experienced Industry Professional option. This provides a path for professionals with significant experience in the catastrophe management field to obtain the CCRMP credential. This can be pursued through an application process that demonstrates mastery of the subject matter from both designation levels. It also will require approximately 10 years of experience and a nomination by a current designation holder. Ultimate approval will be conveyed through an advisory committee. It is expected that this experienced professional option will only be available for a limited time while the program is being built out, likely, the, likely for the next 18 to 24 months. The committee is also looking at the potential to add an experienced industry professional option for the Tier 1 level. Look for more to come on this. Now that you have a better idea about the exam process, the breadth of knowledge that it will convey, and the dedication needed to complete, we would like to share, for your consideration, 
some typical components of a company exam policy. We believe that a policy that provides elements as detailed here will promote interest and success, successful completion of the credential program. Things to consider that are also consistent with policies for actuarial, CPCU, and CSTA designations include reimbursement of the cost of exam fees and materials, paid time off on the day of the exam, and reimbursement of program membership fees. Additional benefits might include on-the-job study time, a bonus or raise upon exam passage, and a bonus raise or promotion upon attaining the credential. And finally, to summarize our discussion from today, we feel that the IFCM ICAS credential provides numerous benefits. It, it establishes a true model agnostic industry credential in line with those supporting other disciplines, such as actuarial finance and risk management. It will elevate the profile and credibility of catastrophe analysts around the world by attracting, identifying, and developing talented candidates. It will also provide a path for self-development and ultimately increase employee retention. We hope that today's discussion has provided a helpful overview of the credential program and that you are in agreement that the credential is a needed addition to the profession. If you are interested in more information, please go to www.catriskcredentials.org for further detail on the individual exam process and registration. Also, if you look under the About menu, there is a Frequently Asked Questions section which will provide some additional insight. Now, I would like to turn it over to Amy Brenner to handle any questions from the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. We had a couple of questions sent to us. Here's one. Would it be appropriate for analysts from any region to sit for exams one to four for the first tier? David, perhaps you could answer that question. Thanks, Amy, uh, and thanks for the question. Um, the focus of the first four exams are in two sections. The first two are uh, aimed at regional knowledge, so they will be specific for um, your region that you are practicing in. Um, right now, as mentioned, we have the U.S. regional first two exams, and we're working on getting the U.K. slash Europe first two exams, um, whereas when the third and fourth exams are going to be, they are basically um, peril agnostic and region agnostic. So they are applicable wherever you are worldwide. So as we, uh, for the U.S., those first two exams are ready and the ones that are being worked on by the volunteers from London are being prepared as we speak. Do we have an approximation of when the experienced route for the first tier credential will be launched? David, perhaps that's one for you. Um, we are anticipating that'll be uh, happening uh, sooner rather than later and perhaps well before the end of this year. Are there any equivalents for uh, waivers from organizations outside the U.S., such as the Chartered Insurance Institute or the IFOA or any other non-U.S. body? Um, this is, this is Joanne. Go ahead, Joanne. Yeah, um, we are um, anticipating looking at that um, in the future, probably, or I would say maybe around the end of this year or early next year. Um, and I also want to just give more details on the waivers we have for the CPCU and um, 
CAF. So if you have a CPCU or you're an associate or fellow of the CAF or have earned our other CSPA credential, and if you have the ARE designation or if you've passed ARE 144, you will get an equivalent, an exemption for um, the first exam. So you can start with the second exam. And also for the ethics course, um, we offer um, exemptions um, if you've taken the um, CISS um, professionalism course or the CPCU requirement, um, you can get credit for the um, ethics course. As if you haven't, um, there's a simple online course that you can take, and you can take that any time in your um, exam progress. Thank you, Joanne. And, and uh, Joanne, um, I, I would add, I would add that for those of our, our profession or outside the U.S., the same working group that is working on the first two exams is also uh, assessing what the equivalencies will be um, for uh, getting uh, equivalent uh, exam waivers, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So that is being tackled at the same time, and that working group is right now working on that. Great. My control panel here indicates that several of our attendees have questions. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat box. And while we are waiting for those, I am actually going to try to unmute some of these attendees so they can ask their questions. The first person I'm going to try to unmute is Alina Asev from Munich Re. Alina, go ahead. Yes, hi. I had a question, um, but I think it was answered. Um, if there will be a nomination process for the um, tier one designation, but I believe David answered this question. Yes, thank you so much. My next person is Josh Dar. Josh, go ahead. Josh, hi. did you have a question? Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, great. I was just wondering if this the, the recording of this presentation will be provided up on the uh, catriskcredentials.org website. Uh, I know there might be several other folks in my company that would be interested in, in doing this at a later time. Okay. That is the plan. We will put a we will put a copy of the recording in the slides on the on the Cat Risk Credentials website. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I think I see another question about how um, one can get involved in working on the exams if they'd like to volunteer. So, Joanne, do you want to answer that one? Um, yes, we have a process where um, we vet the volunteers. So, if you are interested in volunteering, you can send an email to a Brenner at the at um, the CASinstitute.org. She'll then ask for a CV or resume of your experience, and then she'll turn it over to one of the exam committees. I think, um, and probably Amy or Liz could um, expound on it. I think we're looking for question writers for the fourth exam, and we may still need some help on the third exam. Amy, um, can you add more? That the third exam is finished, but we w definitely would need, we possibly could use some help on the fourth exam. We possibly could use some help on the uh, equivalency exams. But there are also areas that perhaps are not as technical that we could use assistance on. So if you are interested in helping with the credential, please send me an email. Again, my email is abrenner, A-B-R-E-N-E-R, -E -E at the casinstitute.org and we will try to match up what you want to do with what our needs are. And thank you in advance. Tiffany, you are on, you are on the phone and apparently you have a question? Hi, can you hear me? Very well. Okay, I actually have two questions. Um, could you just go over again what you said about if you have the CPCU designation and the ARE designation? Does that give you the credential for tier one? 
No, that gives you credit for the first exam. Okay, just the first exam. Thank first you. First exam. And also, yes. And to oh. and to do that, if you go to the website under the credential information for the first tier, there is a drop down where it says waivers, and you get an information on that screen on on of all the combinations that will get you a waiver for the first exam, as well as a link to the form that you need to fill out and send us in order to get the waiver. Okay, great. And my second question was, once you've um, attained the credential, are there any other requirements that you need to maintain it? Yes, there are, and thank you for asking this question. There are continuing education requirements that are currently under development for both tiers of the credential. We think it's important that people who have the credential stay current on changes in the industry. And while we don't have those continuing education requirements out yet, they will be coming and they will be required. Would it be at the RAA conference? Yes, yes. Many of this those. Dave. Oh, David, go ahead. Yeah, and this this is David, and, and yes, absolutely, attending the multi-day uh, conference in in Orlando uh, is absolutely one of those events that will cover it for the year, and that is the anticipation. I should be very careful in saying that, um, and that's also why we're ramping up all of the educational events around uh, at, locally and around you know through the webinars, so that these will qualify or help the partial qualifications for that continuing education requirement. Thank you. In addition, the CIS Institute website continuously lists potential sources for this continuing education on the website as well. So even if there are events that are not being hosted by ISCM or ICAS, we will make you available of them, make you aware of them as we become aware of them. And I could also add that um, if you have continuing education requirements for other credentials that you may hold, like CIS or CPCU, um, if the subject matter is related to catastrophe risk management, you can include some of those continuing education um, events as part of your continuing education requirement for the credentials that we're going to determine. So, for example, you could go to the CIS um, reinsurance seminar and um, count the sessions there that are related to your work um, as part of the continuing ed. Thank you. And um, another thing, um, we've talked about a lot of things that are coming in the work. If you want to stay up to date on things as they're happening, both ISCM and the CIS Institute have a presence on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, and you can follow either or both of us, and then you'll get the latest news um, as it happens. Thank you. Amanda, do you have a question for us? Amanda? I guess not. Okay. If anyone else has a question, please check the question box. Amy Guelph, like you have your hand raised. Do you have a question for us? I'm not even touching my computer, so maybe something's wrong. Okay, thanks. Good morning. Do you have a question for us? Okay. Well, if that's all the questions we have, I want to once again thank my panelists for joining me today. David Keaton, Amy Wixon, Joanne Spala, and Liz Cleary. And thank you to those who signed in today to listen to us. We will get a recording and a copy of the slides up on the website.
and we will send you an email when those are available. Thank you again. Bye.